wait for this uh, all this data to go up to an endpoint to be inspected. Furthermore, the where the inspection point happens has to be scaled correctly. It has to be right sized. Um, it has to be able to scale with load as well. So as we know with this with the times we're in, scaling with load probably came a lot quicker than most of us would have liked. Um, so <clears throat> with BitGlass, what we decided to do is secure a gateway distributed that and we're actually doing that look that enforcement here locally so we're doing the tls inspection on the device we are not tunneling or or backhauling any of that traffic to an enforcement point we're keeping it local here so if you distribute three four five hundred or a thousand fifteen hundred devices out uh you're you don't have to the, all those devices are not going to come back to a central location for the inspection it's going to be distributed between each individual device will will do their own inspection so what does that mean really? So again, I'm running a video here and the user experience in general as I'm um, you know, inspecting uh, different websites and content is you know, how, you know, what's the user experience like? How fast are pages loading? Things like that. Now CNN generally is a pretty heavy website. So that typically takes at least, you know, it could take anywhere from 10, uh, 15 seconds usually. Um, uh, this has been actually slower lately, even on a uh, device without an agent. Uh, again, we can try, you know, another site that has a lot of content that, that changes nonstop, very dynamic, uh, changing continuously, has streaming video as well. And, you know, this one came up a little bit quicker, five seconds. So user experience and us inspecting that data has to happen to, uh, you know, uh, doing it locally here. We're not telling any, any of the traffic back. So as you can see here, these are HTTPS. Most of the traffic on the web nowadays is HTTPS. Uh, so, you know, you know, again, that user experience plus, uh, you know, pushing those policies out to the edge. So I don't want users on my managed device to go to places like poker.com. So all BitGlass did here is we did a, uh, a lookup to one of the uh, content delivery networks that BitGlass has in the, you know, over 200, uh, you know, edge data centers uh, from within BitGlass and we take that information and we just do a category lookup, send that category back down to this endpoint and we say here's the category and the endpoint does the rest of the processing. So we just got back that this was poker so the agent here locally said okay I'm going to process that as poker. Um, maybe it had to decrypt it um, if we're going to HTTPS um, and I'll show you what that looks like as well. So Maybe someone trying to go to megaproxy.com, right? Ooh, if I spell it right, if we can get it right here. Hello. All right, having a typing moment here. Um, so megaproxy.com, obviously we don't want users on these devices to go to a proxying website that's going to allow them to hide what they're doing from us. We need to make sure that we see that, block them from going there, having the ability so again, uh, you know, we, notif we noticed that there, put a use, uh, acceptable use policy. You can customize this based on different categories. You can have a different message here, different icon. You, know, you're, uh, you, can, you can build this out as you wish and customize it. Um, <clears throat> where this starts to get cool is, uh, let's say I am a user that tries to go to yahoo.com. We allow yahoo.com on this personal device. And that's your choice as a company to say yes or no, whether I want to allow them. Right, so let's say we do allow them to go to Yahoo. Um, there is a risk there, obviously, if I allow them to go to Yahoo. And that risk is, what if they decide that they are going to try to send an email with attachments from uh, you know, data that exists on this machine because it's allowed to ex exist here? What if they are, uh, what if they try to attach documents from this machine that potentially have sensitive data in them <clears throat> and uh, I have a policy that's going to inspect for P social security numbers, credit card numbers, and uh, you know I try to upload that and attach that to an email. This is a personal email account, um, and I, you know, again, I block this from hap from from uh, attaching. So what this is, what we call this, is um, dynamic split tunneling. So I allowed you to go to Yahoo but I am not going to allow you to attach specific types of data and those. The, the policies that I showed you earlier that were CASB related, all I did is I'm reusing that, that same DLP object, but I'm using it in my secure up gateway policies now instead. So I don't have to recreate anything. I'm just saying, again, I'm not gonna allow you know, any of that PII or, social, or credit card numbers to be attached to anything that comes back as a personal email, could be a personal um, you know, online storage, could be social media, could be any of that. So again, you know, 
protecting you from that perspective. Um, furthermore, um, I could go to something like uh, ycar.org, right? So I can get to ycar.org. Now, ycar.org has malicious content that you can use for downloading, uploading, testing your malware engines. Also has malicious uh, URLs uh, and, and you know, further URIs that go beyond this, right? So I can, I can, I can put on the end of this right here, uh, test-malware.html, right? Um, so in some of the cases, you know, we don't want to look at just the domain. We want to look further down that URI and make sure that we uh, understand and detect all of, of the potential uh, issues there. So the reason I say that is because what if you go to SharePoint.com and SharePoint.com, sure, that's not a problem, but a lot of malicious content is actually shared via SharePoint. So it comes from a valid domain, but further down that URI, there is malicious content. So we have to inspect that. So I can either click on this and I can go directly to this particular malware uh, location, or I can use a case where someone has sent me an email that has a malicious link inside the email, right? So this is basically, if I click on this, you'll see here it has the wirecard.org, but it has that harmful um, URI. So it blocks me uh, from going there. And this time I displayed a malicious content message instead. So um, again, that was an HTTPS. So I had to basically TLS decrypt that here locally, do a quick lookup on the category. And then when I got that information back, I was notified that this was malicious and therefore blocked it based on that malicious content information. Um, <clears throat> so again, you know, I could have done it there or if I wanted to, I can you even have uh, links inside of websites that are malicious. We are going to inspect beyond the link, not just ycar.org, because you can see ycar.org is actually okay. And then, you know, the URIs, the further links down are, are malicious. So um, another scenario might be, well, if I want to allow users to go to linkedin.com, um, if I actually, did I not spell it? Linkedin.com, there we go. Am I not spelling it right? L -I there we go. I guess I wasn't. Uh, and we'll go ahead and try to log in. And so what happens is with the agent on here, I decided that I want to allow my users to go to linkedin.com. That's no problem. But there's again, risk for someone going to a social media type uh, uh, you know, website or application. Uh, the potential and the risk is uh, what if a user decides to come in and start, you know, you know, here is, uh, company, you know, info, right? And they could put anything here, right? Well, when we try to post that, I'm blocking that post from happening, right? But if you look at, and I can do this for, for files as well. If you look at everything here, it all looks normal. URL looks valid, right? Everything's good there. Site looks normal, not rewriting URLs. Oops, let me go back. I meant to actually click on the, sorry, I clicked on the home. I want to click on this and show you that the certificate is actually a bit glass certificate. So we are in the middle inspecting all this information, uh, you know, allowing the user to go there, but inspecting it as well uh, to make sure users don't go there. Um, you know, and then lastly, the, there's just one other option, um, you know, uh, discord uh, app.com, uh, if I spell it right. And you know, maybe I have a, an application that users are trying to go to. This could be like, you know, if, if they try to go to Box or Dropbox, we want to coach the user back to OneDrive. In my case here, I'm, I'm coaching users back to Slack. Slack is, you know, basically an enterprise uh, software for uh, enterprise companies. And Discord is, gamer, is a gamer site that's based on the same Slack code. So it's, it's very, very similar. Um, and so I wanna make sure users aren't going to Discord. It's, it's a, it could potentially be malicious. So I'm coaching them to the application I, I sanction and, and put uh, control around. So again, the idea is this is a managed uh, company owned asset. It has data, the data is allowed to exist here, but we don't want that data to leave this, de this device and be put in someone's personal accounts. Um, we also want to enforce our and move that edge down to that device so that secure up gateway policies are pushed down to this device and they're processed locally and not backhauled. Um, so again, 
Um, you know, you don't have to, to purchase any more gear uh, to put in your, you know, to right size, you know, all those terminations now that happen in your data center or potentially more services required in the cloud. It's all done at the edge, um, which allows us to save you money because we're distributing that down to devices you've already actually purchased. Um, so now we're just utilizing a little bit of the endpoint uh, processing power. Um, but that's the, that, you know, so the idea here is it's, Big in general is multi mode. So I showed you the unmanaged portion. I'm protecting the data from unmanaged devices. I'm also, I also showed you the forward proxy and secure up gateway. So that's another um, another version of the multi mode. So you have your forward proxy and your secure, secure up gateway as part of the SASE piece. And then the final piece was the API scanning. So again, all of the uh, the different applications, um, you know, you have your API scanning of OneDrive and, and SharePoint and Salesforce and any other cloud application that you eventually move into, whether it's Confluence, Jira, you know, Workday, things like that, um, that will have API um, capabilities of scanning data at rest for those applications. Mm -hmm.